Hey guys, welcome to Earth. Hope all of you are safe and healthy. So today we're going to test our soil with the touch and feel method and prepare it for the next season. So let's begin. The first type we're looking at is a combination of garden soil and sand. How do we identify it? The more deep we go, the soil still remains loose and dry, extremely dry. So this type of soil definitely needs a good amount of cocoa peat or vermicompost or any organic matter so that it can produce well or maintain the moisture level. Because even when you try to hold it or make a ball out of this type of soil after adding water, it doesn't form a ball, which means it's loose so the roots get enough air and good move. But they need organic matter to hold the moisture. The next type we're looking at is a very fertile soil with a combination of vermicompost organic compost organic manure and a combination of cocoa peat as well so we do notice that after one inch of depth the soil still remains moist and loose so this way the plant is getting its nutrients even if you do not water for a day the plant or the soil manages to hold up the moisture and it gives the plants its nutrients on a regular basis so now even after watering when I'm trying to make a ball out of the soil it doesn't wherein it's so fertile and so loose that my plant remains very healthy. The third type we're looking at is pure garden soil with no additives, no manures, no cocoa peat. And we do notice that the soil is extremely hard and the leaves will not be able to take uh, this type of a shock if we leave the plant dry for a few days. Like even in Sam, the roots have a scope of aeration, but this type of soil doesn't even allow the aeration or the roots will feel claustrophobic. So one solution is either we add aggregates or we keep and retain the moisture level in the soil. So this soil as well, when we notice that even after having a good amount of moisture and we're trying to make a ball out of it, it's like clay, it's a proper clay. This soil is not so advisable for almost all the plants, but good for most of the medicinal plants that can be grown. Preparing the soil for the next season is very important because we will definitely find a lot of insects and ants trying to collect their food and keep it in a moist place which is basically our flower pots. So uh, if we want to change the existing ones, we can place these inside a cup of water. Uh, make sure that the stems are not exposed to too much of water and it's only the roots that's immersed add hydrogen peroxide or panchakavyam so that the roots get refreshed and avoids any fungus or root rot. Next thing is we need to dry off the soil before the next plantation. So this way we are preparing a soil um, which has to be more fertile and which has to be more productive for the next season. Make sure to remove all the uh, dry twigs and dead roots and spread the soil completely on a flat ground so that the heat when absorbed by the soil will keep all the ants and insects away from it. The next step is adding ingredients. So the first one is going to be neem powder. Neem powder basically increases the immunity of the plant that's going to be placed inside and it will also increase the fertility of the soil and keep the ants away. So this way the development of earthworms is going to be a little faster if you avoid the other insects in your soil. The next one is going to be um, dry leaf powder. I have given the link in the description below. So this one is also very good to increase the immunity of the soil. Do not add anything sweet like fruit or um, fresh compost you can add a little older compost that if you have because uh, this way it doesn't again attract a lot of ants in this place next we are going to add one sixth of um, vermicompost and one sixth of organic compost that we have like one sixth in the proportion of the total soil that we have taken the old soil we can add two teaspoons or three teaspoons of bone meal powder or rock phosphate if you're going to plan for a fruit and vegetable garden do not overdo with the manure and vermicompost and make sure to just mix the soil really well and check have a dry mix first and then maybe we can add our cocoa peat. Do not add cocoa peat in this stage. So when you're going to add cocoa peat, rub it like, like this so that it mixes up really well throughout the soil. The last stage is adding your seed but 
We need to do it only after fertilizing our soil with WDC or any other liquid fertilizers that we get like Panchakavyam or we can also use FPJs and FFJs to fertile our soil. So this is the soil check I was saying about. So once we know that the soil is nice and loose, it's going to be a very good soil for the next yield. Uh, since the plants are going to have a transplant shock, the ones that have like changed my pot, I'm adding WDC for it. WDC is extremely good. It's going to um, again enhance the growth of my plant and remove my plants from the transplant shock so feeding this once in three days is really good to get the plant back on track and it's also going to improve the fertility and increase the rate of germination and a healthy growth for the other plants so when we are going to uh, start off with a new plant it's definitely important for us to keep the soil very fertile so that the next set of plants are going to come really really healthy and well hope this video was useful meet you guys in the next video until then namaste